suggesting that there's a possibility of actually having a 136 year maximum sentence is wildly misleading. What I was expecting is exactly what we ended up getting. The actual charges are not all that different from what I was expecting to see. Pretty straightforward. Grand jury, County of New York, goes through each of the different counts. All of these are the exact same charge. Falsifying business records in the first degree. It goes through each and every single count for three different falsified records. It just goes through each and every month for pretty much every single month over the course of 2017, all the way up to all 34 counts. And that's it. That's the whole indictment is all it does is list each of these over and over and over again. What it amounts to looks something like this. Three different categories, invoices, ledger entries, and checks. So each and every single time there was a different record made, each one of those is a separate count. And that's basically all it is. Here's a little bit of summary of it. So this is what it looks like. 11 counts from invoices from Michael Cohen, 11 counts on the checks that were written to Michael Cohen, and then 12 counts for ledger entries that were written in the books by Trump or Trump organization representatives. So I talked about these 34 counts. I've heard some commentary about that if he were to be convicted on all of these different counts, that he would be facing a 136 year maximum sentence. And wow, okay. This is very much misleading. The reason it's misleading is because, yes, there are 34 different counts of alleged actions in carrying out a crime, but it's not 34 different crimes. It's 34 different counts. Each and every single one of these are the counts. All of these different records that were input, they're not 34 different crimes. All of them are falsifying business records, document fraud. So it's all the same crime. In order to get that maximum sentence, a person would need to be convicted on every single one of these counts and receive the maximum sentence for every single one of these counts. And they would have to then be sentenced to serve the sentences consecutively, one after another after another, instead of serving them concurrently all at the same time. Most of the time when people are sentenced, if they're sentenced to, let's say you got 34 counts, you were sentenced to one year for each count. Instead of serving 34 years consecutively, you would serve them concurrently one year total. So basically you get 34 different sentences of one year. You would only end up serving one year because you're serving them all at the same time. And especially in a situation like this, where you would have a first time offender, you'd have mitigating other factors like age, not to mention political status and money to hire lawyers to try and deal with this and negotiate these things, it's unlikely that anybody in the same situation, the same circumstances would actually get a much higher than just usually like probation or a fine is probably what there's going to be looking at. So suggesting that there's a possibility of actually having a 136 year maximum sentence is wildly misleading without context it kind of bolsters a potential idea that the Trump is a target here, a political target, which is not something that is needed. This is not something that needs to be furthered.